All right, here we go. I've always been interested to see if anything lives right around here. I know there's something up shallow. They were up shallow in the one of the deepest reservoirs I fish yesterday. Same exact conditions. Nothing has changed. This is a shallower lake, so it should be a degree or two warmer even. Again. Let's go fish this abomination of a waterway. All right, lock you up so no scavenging folks take my $2 bill in my wallet. My lucky $2 bill, all the currency I'm worth. All right, there's one other crazy bastard here. Someone took the bench away. Did somebody throw it in? What, what is, the bench is taken apart. Who does that? The bench that was here, so it's a, it was a picnic table. You know, would I be an evil person to throw that in as structure? So hopefully that goes down at some point soon. But you see guys, I don't mind doing that kind of stuff. That's not littering. That right there is ample fish habitat. Ask any good fisherman, you know, ask around. I mean, if there's anything in this place anymore, they'll eat a jerk bait, for sure. So an interesting way to work a jerk bait, you know, if you're in really shallow water and your jerk bait's going a little deeper than you want it to, um, to keep it up, first get at the highest elevation you can, and then, you know, work it with the tip upwards, vertically, so, and then you bump the butt of the rod as you twitch. So it's gonna be this motion, boom, boom, just like that, right? So you tighten your, tighten your slack a little bit, and you just, bumping up bumping up and that keeps it up as high as possible in the water column it's an interesting little trick that i've learned over the years it's just you know simple physics you keep it up you bump the bottom just like that i'm not doing it very smoothly obviously because i'm trying to show you guys on camera but hopefully you get the gist i almost forgot i brought this rod I know this other guy's around here somewhere. I just haven't seen him yet. How you doing? One? Ooh. Hey, I see. I see you at uh. I see you at all the time. Yeah. With the blue kayak. Yes. Yeah. How's it going? I'm David. Oh, I'm nice David to, too. Oh, nice. Oh, that's wild. Nice to meet you, sir. Okay. What you catch? A bass? No. A trout. Trout. Yeah. Oh. They stuck right here, uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, but the, they say put the 500, probably. Yeah. Probably, I say 100. Wow, because so there's... They, see, nobody here, the north is like, right now it's two hours, I only catch Just one? Yeah. Small? Uh, so there's trout. Oh, wow. Rainbow? Yeah. That's great. Hey man, well nice to meet you, sir. Yes. Now I finally know your name when I see you at okay. Yeah, I'll be I'll be fishing there a lot this year too. Oh, okay. As soon as it warms up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The bass in this lake, I fished this place for 10 years. Really? Yeah, since I was a little kid. I'm 25. Uh -huh. I fished here since I was 12. Back then, the biggest bass out of here, four pounds, nine ounces. Wow. Yeah, off the island on the other side. But since then, it's been people take fish, bat, yeah. big bass, and take the big bass. Yeah. You know, crappy bluegill trout. Why not? But the big bass, people take them. You know, it is what it is. They don't they don't reproduce fast enough. So we'll see. I got one last February off the island too, three pounds. It was what? all right. Yeah. But it's just still too cold, I think. Yeah. Best of luck to you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. See you later, bud. I'll let you have this spot. You got it. Oh. <laughs> Good luck. And I actually knew that guy from fishing another lake in the area. He's a very dedicated older Asian guy. See him at this other lake down the road probably, oh my God, like four times a month. 
easily an average. Now he brings his blue kayak and that little tiny Honda Civic, man. Next time I see him, we'll get him on some pissy fun gear because it looks like he's still on the Shakespeare, you know, just the, you know, you guys know. All right. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's why you don't eat fish out of here. As much as I uh, respect his grind and coming out here catching trout, I probably would throw that trout right back because of that right there. I don't know what it is. It's just some nasty aquatic vegetation that probably shouldn't be there this time of year. So, I mean, now that I know there's trout that were just stocked in here, I had totally forgotten they did that. I think it would be the optimal time for like a big old soft swim bait trout imitation, but I just, I don't really have that on hand, so. I think the jerk bait is a really close second because it imitates a dying bait fish. And some of these trout, um, you know, once they get slammed or if they're injured, they act really weird and lethargic and dart. And I can mimic that perfectly with this jerk bait, so it's no problem. If we can come across some hungry bass, I think they'll be willing to take it. But it's a matter of like, what's the population of fish? As I said before, I don't know. I mean, there might be like 10 quality bass in the whole damn thing coming across those 10 might not be as hard as we imagine but getting them to bite that's difficult especially if these 10 fish cycle around the lake all day and see these fishermen they're like that's bob again dude like he's here every week you know it's that type of deal on a first name basis with these fish all right got him i got him on the sparky oh my god i got him on the sparky Oh my God, I got him on the Sparky. Oh, it happened. It happened. Oh my God, first cast. Got him. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that, dude. Look at that. This is the most finicky, pressured lake you will ever see me fish, guaranteed. Look at that. Doing absolute damage. I love the Spark Shad. I really love it. And he's off. That was amazing. Dude, that's a huge accomplishment for this place. You guys have no idea. Like I said, that's probably one of 20 healthy fish in here, maybe 10. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to take what we can get with this pond. Fished it pretty hard for a few hours. Maybe not even, not even two hours. Good hour and a half though. Gave it some shots, connected once. That was a lot of fun. But I had this sudden urge to hit another pond that I know of, it's a private place. But the chances of hooking up with a big fish are very good there, very good. So I've only got two rods, one medium power, one medium heavy fiberglass for my cranking. I've only got a small selection of baits. Let's shoot over there and see what we can do. All right, so we got the gear, we're on the way to the lake, and this is what we're dealing with, but that's perfect. And we'll be there right now. There we go. There we go. What do I tell you guys? Go with your gut, man. I, I switched bodies of water guys I, I, I didn't just fish what I was doing I didn't just switch what I was doing I switched where I was completely so you got to be around fish to find fish you dig make the necessary adjustments you can catch fish and see this is why the population thrives here nobody's taking fish very active he hit a fast moving chatterbait water's probably 48 degrees They're in this deeper hole. This is the deepest hole in the lake right here. <laughs> no surprise. Oh, got him, got him. Jeez, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Just go with what you know. Go with what you got confidence in. This thing hit the water. That's all it did, it hit the water and he jammed it. It's two for two. Two for two. When those geese jetted off, they actually scared something. They scared something right there. There he is. 
What did I say? What did I say? Alright, so that was like three for five, not bad. Let's see a big guy. Three for five. All right, that's three fish in like 15 minutes. So being that they're in such a specific area, I'm gonna position myself as close as I can. And I'm gonna get as far up in that little section as I can. Sink, sink, sink. Hit the bottom, pick it up quick. Get it vibrating. Make sure every bass around it knows it's on its last trip home. That was like two casts later. This is a little bit better. This fish is not over two pounds, I'd say, but he's close. There you go. Stay calm. If that doesn't make you believe in a chatterbait, I don't know what does. It's the best one so far. See you, buddy. That's number four, five, I don't even know. Four, we'll just call it four, just to be modest. And there it is for all the chatterbait skeptics. So on our way to get this stuff, I just want to talk to you guys about one of the main challenges anglers should challenge themselves to do, and that is diversify. So even though right now, most of you guys would be like, why are you switching it up? Like, are you crazy? You have four fish in like 20 minutes. So basically we're being spoiled right now. This is the perfect opportunity when the fish are active and biting to try things that you normally wouldn't. I normally don't throw a double Zulu. I'm gonna try it. I'm just ADD, I'm everywhere. Let's do a jerk bait first. So before you guys think I'm mindlessly switching and instead of going to the double Zulu, I go to the jerk bait and whatever, here's my thinking behind the jerk bait first. I can work the jerk bait pretty quickly, right? I can really vary my cadence, my retrieve speed, all that. And I can determine if these fish, ooh, that got thumped. And I can determine if these fish even want a bait that's moving like this, because if they don't want a jerk bait, right? the odds are very high that they won't want the double Zulu because that's all a double Zulu is, a soft version of a jerk bait. So we're gonna try this first. All right, here goes the double Zulu. Come on, there is no way. No way they don't want that. There we go. They're like right in that little pocket. That one little that one little alley between these two fountains. So now that we found you guys, we just have to I've been setting the brakes as loose as I can and whirling this as far as as far away from me as I can. Chatterbait madness. That's five, we got a limit. Thank you, Pond. Thank you so much. All right guys, so this is how specifically the fish are acting today. They're not taking anything except this guy. That's it. Even without a tail, they won't eat it. So it's very specific stuff. They want the chatterbait with a paddle tail swim bait. And that's it. Well, let's get another one. There he is. I was like, there's no way they can turn down a soft swim bait today, bro. Not in this lake. It's a little ding ding. It's a little pequeño guy. All right, give me another fish on a soft swim bait. All right, so here's the question. Now that I've caught a fish on a soft swim bait and a chatterbait with a soft swim bait trailer, question is, are they keying in on the chatterbait action or are they keying in on the boot action of that tail? This is an eight pound test, 12 pound braided mainline to eight pound P-line CXX. And this fish just feels like a goliath. It's a nice fish. It's probably among the healthier ones we've caught today. And there you go. That's like seven fish. We're still looking for that big one though. There he is again. Ooh. That's the biggest one today. So the answer to our question, the fish are keying on the bait, on the soft swim bait. That's the deal. Bye bye. That's awesome. Number seven or eight. Stealth. It's deadly. Super finesse. Super effective. And until the grass grows back in here, this is going to work like a charm. There 
There he is again. Let me give him a quick release. Thank you. That escalated quickly. Quickly, quickly. All right, guys, I think we're going to end the day now. It's getting pretty late out. Uh, we had a blessed day on the water. The weather wasn't great. Water temps are still pretty low, but either way, we had some good success. This spot was much better than the first one, even though at the first pond we did catch one fish, which never happened. So it was a great day either way. I hope this video showed you guys in a really clear way how to adapt your approaches during the pre-spawn for some of these pond fish. I mean, you can tell no matter where you're fishing, these fish are finicky. So they're very specific and they're keying in on certain patterns. You guys just have to figure it out. Cycle your baits, keep confidence, keep fishing. See you next time, guys. In front of us the whole day. This fish hit, this is much bigger. Much bigger. <sighs> this fish hit. I was gonna say bye to you guys. I did say bye, but I kept fishing. And this is why. This is why, right here. Come here, mama. Come here. That's what I'm talking about. Nonchalant, baby, nonchalant. Nonchalant. Look at this. Look at this creature. Oh my God. Look what's in its mouth. Look what's in its mouth. Holy shit. Oh my God. All right, we gotta hurry up. All right, back to the other side. Are you kidding me? Scale ain't working. 15 pounds my ass come on okay not gonna waste his time he needs to live weight's not important life is look at that beast and let her back <sighs> I think we can leave now water warrior game Thank you.